Hi, my name is Nicholas Bianco, and today I'm going to be taking you through my presentation, which is going to be on ethical consumption. Ethical consumption is a large deal, especially nowadays, uh, I would say more so than in the past. And I'm going to take you through kind of a few reasons as to why this is. Um, I have titled my presentation, A Better Way for Consumers to Have Control. Once again, throughout the presentation, uh, we will see why I say this as consumers having more control over the products that they buy and the companies that they buy from. And so that'll, that'll play a big part into our world and, and also in this presentation. So our first slide is going to be called Connections. And this is going to be the biggest part of ethical consumption. It's going to be the connections that you make to your products. So first off, before you go and buy your product, uh, you're going to have to look at how the product is made. So what is this product being made from? Are these substances harmful? Um, is there plastic in it? Is there things that could cause waste in our society that we don't want to, to leave a harmful effect on the earth? And so that's something that we need to take a look at. Who is making the product? Uh, the companies that are actually making these products, are they, are they good companies? Do they have something that they stand for? Uh, are these companies people that you want to be giving your money to and people that you want to be purchasing from? So that's another key factor we're going to be looking at. And as I said in the one below, what does this company stand for? Like I said, some companies, you know, have a better rap in the markets and the industries for for just doing well with the earth, uh, trying hard to get more green, losing carbon footprint and things such as that. And is this something that you believe to be good? So is this product something that you think is necessary to you, something that you think is going to help you, and at the same time not harm the earth in ways that, that you don't want it to as a consumer? And that would be uh, sort of the feel for how ethical consumerism is. These are not all the points, but these are just some that you could, you could lean to. So our next slide is going to be think before buying. And so as I said, in the connections, this, this kind of keys in with that and wraps that up is to this could be a problem with ethical consumption that consumers need to start thinking more before buying things. Um, so when you're going to the supermarket, I know it may be very easy just to, you know, pick up the lowest price item, put it in your, in your cart and, and move on. Let's say it's toilet paper, just choosing the cheapest one and leaving. And that, that, that is the case for many of us. Um, a lot of the times that's what happens, but what we need to start doing is thinking before we're buying. So, maybe doing a little research before we go on the companies that may be making these items that we're looking for and kind of look into which companies we would like to give our money to um, for the product. And sometimes they may be a little more pricey and that could be another harmful effect on why this isn't even bigger than it is now. And so as our topic is called ethical consumption, our next slide is called unethical consumption. And is this a thing? And so ethics are mainly based off of values and they're dependent to the context that, that you're using them under. There's some situations where you can apply this as being unethical. There's other situations where you could say it's completely ethical. Um, this is not set in stone. Now, furthermore, there are some universal ethics um, that everyone follows, such as, let's say, harming animals. Uh, that Universally, that would be very unethical. Uh, stealing money, very unethic once again. And there's just some universal ethics that are out there that we all know. Um, so that could be the case with some situations. And then cost versus benefits, which we'll look at later, uh, could really drive a force to stop ethical consumer consumerism. Because let's say you're looking at one product and it's, as in the picture it describes, the apples either $1 or $3. Not everyone could just make the change and buy the more ethical apple for two more dollars because it's just not possible in their livelihood, in their situation. And so that's something that also needs to be thought of and taken a look at when we're later in this discussion. Okay, so our next slide is going to be the domino effect. And this effect has been used in many different cases. Uh, this is just an effect to where once one falls, others will fall in place with it. So once the first kind of, excuse me, batch of consumers begins to follow ethical consumption, others will fall behind and the same with the companies. So once the companies start catching hold of, okay, maybe if we do things differently, if we do things a little bit better for the earth and also for the consumers, 
we will make more sales and other companies will begin to realize like, hey, if they're doing that, we could do that as well. And we could also help generate better revenues. So why is this not seen in the market today? Like I said, it's very hard uh, for consumers. We don't often think before buying and the capitalism structure that we're in today. And, and that could be a problem. How can this help the economy? It could do wonders for the economy in ways that companies could start doing better around us and just consumers will start thinking more before buying and it'll all fall into place where other companies do the same things and then the world will be better off with companies taking strides to better themselves. Is this realistic? I think personally, yes, this is very realistic. Uh, the way that we as a community think nowadays about how the world is going and how our earth is being affected, which we'll go over later. Trust versus price is a big issue here. Um, how are we going to trust these companies? So we see them, how do we know that they're doing these things? And this could come from multiple different sources, such as what we see in the news, what we see on their social medias, et cetera. And there's different ways that you could see really what the company is actually doing. And so that plays a role into, are you willing to pay for this company because you know that they're doing better versus are they actually? And so that plays a large role in, into this economy and the way that this will work and what price makes ethical consumption not worth it. As I said earlier, there are cases where you just can't make the switch because it's not economically possible for you. And that's okay. Um, that I, that, like we said, there, it's not unethical to buy the cheaper one, uh, to make your life better. And to, if that's all that you could afford and that's how you need to better yourself. Um, that that's, that's the case in many, in many cases. So, and will companies adapt? Hopefully they do as, as in said in the domino effect. Okay, so I'm gonna go through some examples of ethical consumerism with you. Uh, so boycotting companies, we'll go over one later. This is a thing when companies are very unethical, how consumers have already taken action to try to stop that. Buying products that don't harm animals, as we talked to you earlier, uh, is a way that many people go about their ethical consumerism and have already started and begun this. Sustainable product choices in environmentally friendly products has become a much larger role in these past few years over our economy. So I'm gonna give you two companies, two real life examples of this, and it's gonna be Patagonia and Nestle. So Patagonia is a clothing company which switched to originally grown cotton or organically grown cotton, excuse me, altered its supply chain for better working conditions and great health insurance and great pay for their employees. And so this is a company that has a strong backbone and that people know do the right things behind the scenes and that's what people like to see they have a respected brand name yes they may be pricier but a lot of sales still go through them now when it comes to nestle this is actually a company that was boycotted in britain it's been going on for about 30 years now uh, mainly because of promoting misleading and harmful products to the economy uh, and using suppliers that do not follow humane and normal procedures, as well as controlling and abusing water sources that they have for their water bottling companies. How can this impact change the world? Uh, there's many different ways. Uh, we could see carbon footprint going down dramatically if companies start doing things together and, and in bulk. And has this already started? Yes, there are some companies that have been doing this, like I said, Patagonia, and there's other companies in that realm. Who has the power to ignite this change? that's going to be the consumer and, and other consumers following along. And that's the end goal here. Side effects. So every positive has a negative. Uh, the, the expensive products comes in to where you may not be able to even purchase that because it may be too much or it may hurt your lifestyle. If you do, more consumers have to follow behind. It can't just be one group and companies also have to follow. And there may be jobs lost because of unethical companies not being sold anymore. So. There's, there's every positive has a negative and there's things that could happen because of this that will hurt. Climate change has become such a big issue uh, that I think this is gonna be the number one pusher behind this um, because I've seen it grown so much in our economies and in our public lives over the past few years because science has been able to push this issue to the forefront, which has been very important. And for final thoughts, uh, ethical consumerism can very well become a normal way of shopping, uh, especially in the U.S. economy, and that could help change the world in great lengths and more than people more than people know and think. And so I think that we will see the domino effect happen and that it's going to be a good thing for our economy and for our world as, as a whole. Thank you.